you believe how many acronyms we use as quilters? There's tons of them. I couldn't even go through all of them with you. But there's one specific acronym that I'd like to talk to you about today. The one that I like to use when I teach my paper piecing classes. It's TSP. That stands for Trim, Sew, Press. It reminds us of the steps that we need to do while we're paper piecing after you glue on that first piece. So let's get to it. By the way, if you want to watch a really funny video that I just came across the other day, it talks all about acronyms that quilters use. It's put out by Karen Brown from Just Get It Done Quilts. It's so funny. It made me giggle several times. Check it out if you get a chance, but don't leave. Let's talk about the TSP process for paper piecing. Here we go. Okay, so the first step in the trim sew press process is the trim. And how do we do the trim? We use the add a quarter ruler. Now you can watch my previous video where I show you specifically how to use the add a quarter ruler, but I'll go over that again real quick. We're just gonna trim our piece. Here's my foundation piece that I need to have trimmed. And we're going to place the fold template on line one, which is my, so I've already placed section one, so now I'm getting ready to do my next section two. And we're, we'll place the fold template right on the line. Then I'm gonna fold that fabric back right against that fold template. Then I'll grab my add a quarter ruler, and I'm gonna basically bump that little lip. There's a little lip right there, see that? That's gonna bump up against my fold template. Then I'll take my rotary cutter. I'm going to trim this little excess fabric away. So that is the trim. Okay, so the next step in the trim sew press process is to place your next section. So if you're following along with my video series, this is unit S from the desert sky. We've already placed section one with our glue. We've used our add a quarter to trim on line one and it's folded over just like this. So this is our little quarter inch seam allowance. Now, what I've gone and done is I traced the quarter inch seam allowance lines here with pencil just so you could see them for the video. If you're having a tough time with your paper piecing and fi figuring out where that next section of fabric goes, might not be a bad idea to just do a quick little dashed uh, pencil line or something so you can see I also have a light behind me, so it makes um, it a little easier for me to see the lines. But if you're at home trying to get this done, those putting those dash lines on your seam allowance lines helps you place your fabric. So remember, we're gonna be doing right side to right side. So if we grab our next stack of fabrics, um, I'm just gonna take the first piece here. I will be going over chain piecing in another video that I'll link to here. Um, we're going to take our piece. Um, this one doesn't actually have a piece of paper, but if you have a, see how this one here says sew line, we're going to make sure that that sew line is facing away from us and it's a nice straight line. The edge of the fabric that we just trimmed with our add a quarter ruler is going to be lined up with this next piece of fabric. So with the same process that we use to make sure that the fabric covers where we're going to be piecing. I'll hold it up a little bit so you can see better. So we want to make sure that this area of the paper, which is where that little spike's going to be, is completely covered by fabric. So if I were to line these edges up, I want to make sure that I leave just a little bit above. This piece is plenty long enough. This is the bottom of that triangle. You can if you can see through the paper, there's a point right there. So I want to make sure that my fabric comes below that. And you can, if you can see the shadow through the fabric there, the edge of this strip comes way, so it comes way down here. It's a, almost a half inch or so past that dashed line. So I know that that's going to fully cover this area where my spike is going to be where this fabric is. Now one other tip that I have, see how we have a dark that's on top of a light? If you're paper piecing with some really high contrast fabrics where you're afraid that dark fabric is going to show through the light, 
anytime you're putting a light fabric on the bottom, it, it's not the same as say if this was a light here and the fabric on the bottom was dark, it doesn't really matter because once you press it open, that dark fabric is going to be fine. But in the case where the light like this is on the bottom and you don't want to have a shadow of that dark fabric, what you'll want to do instead of lining the, these edges up so they're even, take that light fabric and move it up just an eighth to a sixteenth of an inch so it's going to be above that dark fabric and uh, one of the one of my fellow instructors used to use this little saying it says let the light stand tall behind the dark and so if you wanted to remember that as a little saying let the light stand tall behind the dark that will eliminate any possibility of a shadow of your dark fabric coming through after you press this open. So here is the way that this should be lined up. Now we're going to head over to the sewing machine and I'll show you how to sew this real quick. All right, here we are at the sewing machine and I've already made sure that my sewing machine is set up and ready to sew for paper piecing. I wanna make sure we have a smaller stitch length have the correct thread, have the correct needle. There's a video that I put out on how to set up your machine for paper piecing. I'll leave a link to this up in the screen, but you'll wanna make sure that you have your sewing machine set up correctly. So when I get it to the machine, I'm going to put my left hand underneath and kind of hold the paper down. And we're going to be sewing right here on line one. So I'm going to Drop my presser foot down. I'm lining up. I have my machine so it's set to sew down the center and I'm lining up my presser foot and my needle with so I'll sew directly on this line. So you want to start, start a couple of stitches prior to the edge of the sheet. So you'll start a couple stitches early and then, then you'll sew on the line. So I'm just going to... This isn't a road race but if you do go fast, I'm going to sew the line. And then we're going to come off a couple of stitches off the end of the sheet. Now, if for some reason you get off a little bit, like you're sewing, just like if you're driving down the road, if you tend to veer off the road just a little bit, don't make a quick correction and try to go back. If you sew off just a little bit, then just slowly veer right back onto the line and you'll be just fine and there shouldn't be a need to have to remove the stitches. But if you get off the line and you go er, and you get and you make a big notch to go back on, you're probably going to have to take that out because it's going to leave. You'll definitely see that when you go to press it. So the next step in our trim sew press paper piecing process is to press. So let's take it over to the pressing station and I'll show you some tips on how to press. Here we are at the pressing station and what we're going to do is press this piece of fabric over. Now, don't just take your, your iron and press like this. What we want to do is do get it nice and flat so there's no creases in there whatsoever. So flip it over, do just a quick thumbnail finger press so it's nice and flat. Then take your iron and we're just going to press. So I usually set it on there and do a one, two, three count. You don't want to use steam and that's nice and flat. So we don't want to have it where there's a little bump or anything there. You want to make sure it's nice and flat. Now that we have this piece all nice and pressed, we're going to go on to the next step, which is basically we're going to repeat this process over and over. Trim, sew, press. So let's, I'll walk you through the trim and the sew and the press one last time. Let's take it over to do the trim. All right, so the trim, we got my fold template, replacing it on line two. What I like to do is take my fabric and everything and fold it over, so line that up. Now, now that we've sewn, see there's this little bit of fabric that's just right here? That's the seam, and what you're gonna do, just place your hand real close here, take your right hand and just pull it back. Sometimes the paper will rip and sometimes it, it won't, but that's, that's no big deal, the paper rips. Now we're gonna take the add a quarter ruler, bump that up against the fold template, 
And one thing that I want to mention too is when you're using your rotary cutter, it's kind of got my camera in the way, but when you cut, you want to make sure that you're cutting in a nice straight fashion. A lot of times what I find myself doing and I see a lot is you'll push towards this and what happens is this, this, the top part of the ruler will go in. So when you look at your cut, it'll be a quarter inch here and then it'll get smaller and go down to an eighth of an inch. So always try to make sure that you're cutting in a nice straight motion and try not to press up against your ruler too much because it, it will tend to s slide in at the top just right up here and you're going to be cutting off more than your quarter inch seam allowance. So that's the trim. Now our next piece is section three which is our background piece and it should be the same color as section one because we're trying to keep these all the same. Here is my section three fabric. Now remember I told you last time if the light is on the bottom you want to move it up. Now what we're doing this is section three here. See these dashed lines? That's where we want to make sure the fabric is covering. So we'll line up the edge of the fabric we just trimmed to the sew side of section three. Now I want to make sure that there's enough fabric sticking out on the top right here. Make sure there's enough fabric. So if I look at it right now, see there's not enough fabric. So I want to grab this and move it up a little bit. I normally would be doing this down on the mat, but I'm holding it up so you can see in the camera. So see here, right here is the edge of that piece. The paper's folded back, so now it's a mirror image. If you look at how the fabric is, you can kind of see, maybe, I want to place my fabric, see how I've got a little bit of a piece of fabric that's sticking above that paper? This is my triangle right here. I've got the fabric edges lined up here. If you kind of follow this dashed line down, you'll see my piece of fabric that's shadowed behind. Here's the dashed line right there, and you can see the shadow of my fabric sticks down below about a half inch. So we're lined up the top here. There's my point down there and I've got plenty. If you look right here, I've got plenty of fabric coming out the end and I've got, here's my top edge of that fabric. So there's plenty to cover here. So now we're gonna take it over to the sewing machine and sew on the line. Okay, I'm here at the sewing machine. I'm gonna flip my paper over. Now I'm getting ready to sew on line two, which starts right here. So I'll put my presser foot down, line that up. And we're sewing down line two. Now see how this one doesn't come at the edge of a paper, but I still want to go, let me zoom in. I still want to go a couple stitches past the end of this line. And the reason for that, let me finish sewing here. The reason that we sew just past this line is now when we go to trim on line three, remember we're trimming at the quarter inch. So when we make that cut, the next time we trim on line three, we're going to be cutting those extra strings that are on the back here. We'll be cutting these strings off. So then you don't have to go back afterwards and trim all your strings. It'll all be done. Uh, so that's the purpose of sewing past that line a couple stitches and okay, same with the top here when we go to trim our block at the very end it's going to trim off all these threads so we won't have all those threads that we have to go around and individually trim off now over to the pressing station okay here we are at the pressing station and we're ready to press so i'm going to flip this over remember i like to do get it nice and flat do a nice real quick finger press so it's nice and flat. Then we're gonna take our iron and we're just gonna press one, two, three, and that looks awesome, nice and flat. There you have it. That is the trim sew press process. You basically just repeat this process over and over on each piece until you're done. 
Now, if you're doing a Quiltworks project, Judy designs these projects to be done in a chain piecing manner, which means that you would do all of your pieces at the same time. So in this demonstration, all I did was show you how to do one piece. In reality, if you wanted to get your work done quicker, the best way to do it is to chain piece where you're going to do all nine pieces or whatever pattern that you're working on. Typically there's eight pieces or 12 pieces, 16 pieces. Do all of those pieces at the same time and then instead of just doing one block at a time. I, I used one piece just for demonstration purposes, but if I were to sit down and sew this on, a, on my own regularly, I would definitely do chain piecing. So check out this video that I put together on how to chain piece to show you how to do it in mass production. Stay tuned for the next video in our Quiltworks 101 beginner paper piecing series where I, I teach you some more tips and tricks on how to get your paper piecing done. Thanks so much for watching. If you find my videos useful, please feel free to give me a thumbs up, share this video with your friends, and consider subscribing. That way you'll be notified the next time I post an awesome video on Quiltworks or paper piecing tips and tricks. Thanks so much, happy quilting. Hope to see you next time.